it gets people talking. So we have with us a dietitian, Nicola Ludlam Rain, with us. Good morning to Hello. you. Uh, do you want us to put your cards on the table? Milk, yay or nay? Yay if you're not intolerant or allergic. It's high in protein and it's naturally rich in B12, calcium and iodine. But it's getting a bit of a bad press at the moment. And if you just take away the, the veganism argument mm -hmm. that, you know, to avoid animal products, separately, people were avoiding milk for health reasons. And I do that awful, you know, quotation, air quotation thing, but I, I can't really think of another way of describing it. Why had, had that come about? It said that about a quarter of young people are now switching to milk alternatives. And that's in comparison to only a tenth of the population. It could be thanks to social media, so lots of wellness bloggers are using these milk alternatives. But also, young people are more susceptible to misinformation from scaremongering, incorrect documentaries, because really, dairy is completely healthy if you're not intolerant or or you're not allergic. The problem with some of the milk alternatives is that some of them are not fortified, especially the organic versions. What does that mean, fortified with Fortified what? with vitamins such as vitamin D, B12 and calcium. And a lot of them are not fortified with iodine. And iodine is really important, especially if you're breastfeeding or if you're pregnant. So it, it is concerning. I suppose one of the things that, you know, even as we're saying these things, that there will be people thinking, I'm a little bit confused, good or bad, is it good for me, it might be good for someone else. It is the rule of thumb that if you're considering a major change to your diet, should you be seeking medical advice, whether it's from a dietitian or your GP, if you're considering something, I say radical, I don't mean you know extreme, I just mean something that's significantly different. Yeah, I mean, for health, a varied and balanced diet is essential. And there's no reason why people can't incorporate plant-based milks into their diet. But making sure that they've got other sources of dairy, whether it be cheese or yogurt, or even fish from the point of view of calcium and iodine. So yeah, if people are thinking of making radical changes, definitely speak to your GP first. But really, for health, it's a case of balance and var var variation across the week. Can I just make clear? So fortified milk. Yeah. Milk comes from the cow. And then all these extras, are they added to it by our manufacturing system, so in the manufacturing system? Milk is milk, and it's naturally rich in the vitamins that I mentioned and right. protein. Which you can find in other foods. Yes, um, in things like fish, so iodine. Um, however, the milk alternatives have to be fortified. So the milk alternatives have to have added vitamins to make them fortified. And only a select few contain iodine. And that's the problem that we're seeing in children and millennials that iodine deficiency. So if people are cutting out things like fish and cheese and yogurt, they could be becoming deficient in these nutrients. I remember when I was uh, a child, it was many, many years ago, you used to be uh, given milk at school. Uh, you know, everyone was given milk at, you know, a break in the morning and you'd get milk. Yeah. We've, we've come a long way since then, haven't we? And, and uh, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. We have, and I think milk for children is a really good source of fat, energy, and protein. So if children are being given milk alternatives, I would definitely seek the support of a dietitian or a doctor because it's the children who could be missing out on these essential nutrients and their energy as well. The Trade Association for the UK Dairy Industry used the phrase, um, younger people can be susceptible to misinformation. You use that phrase. But the National Farmers Union also takes a look at this from an environmental point of view and says they've been really conscious of the environmental footprint we're talking about greenhouse emissions from dairy farms as well. So that's also played into not necessarily 18 to 24 years, but everyone's mind. You're right. But, I mean, uh, milk alternatives do take a lot of water to produce as well. And if you're, for example, having almond milk, which tastes delicious, but often the almonds are flown in from California. So you have to question the sustainability and the environmental implications of that as well. Oat milk, yes. Not so much, though. Um, oat milk, yes. Yeah. So depending on where the oats are grown. Um, so I think it's a case of variation. You can include these plant milks, but if you solely do, make sure that they're fortified and go for the unsweetened variety. Nicola, thanks very much. Thank you.